Well, it's time for some more color matching, which I think is one of the most productive um, uses of your time as a bait maker. Even when you've gained a lot of experience or when you're new, color matching other colors that you see, whether it's uh, another small bait maker like me or some of the big brands, right? Is always fun. So I, um, after the uh, Guggen remelt video that I did about, I don't know, what was that, two months ago maybe? I remelted a bunch of Guggen baits. I actually heard from Fish Media, which is Guggen baits. <laughs> they reached out to me and they were super cool about it. So they actually sent me a big box of, of, of a ton of Guggen baits um, in support of that video. So. They basically sent me a big box of Guggen baits and some other stuff uh, for the intention of me doing more remelt videos. They literally reached out to me and said, uh, we really liked the video. We thought it was a cool concept because that's where a lot of people start their bait making um, is by either color matching like we're doing today or remelting existing baits. So um, I applaud Guggen for uh, seeing that as a positive video and not like a uh, insult to their uh, product or anything like that. So be on the lookout for some more Guggen remelt stuff because we have a lot more of it for the next go around. Um, but with that said, a lot of you have wanted me to match some Guggen colors. Oddly enough, the color that we're matching today, I don't have a sample of. It wasn't in the uh, box that they sent and I just, I haven't had time to go get some and they're kind of hard to find right now on the shelves um, so we're just going to use pictures the old-fashioned way on the world's worst fishing i used to just pull up all these pictures online and try to show you how to build the color um, so today we're doing probably my favorite guggen color that i've seen at least the ones that i've seen i haven't seen them all like i said they're a little difficult to find and to be honest i don't shop a whole lot for soft plastics anymore but we're going to be matching guggen baits natural it's a beautiful color it's a pumpkin and pearl laminate in a way, or, or a watermelon pearl laminate. Let's get started. Okay, so this is actually one of the clearest images I can find online. So we can see that top color is basically a straight watermelon. It's very green. It doesn't look so much like a green pumpkin with a ton of brown in it. So I'm just gonna use a straight watermelon color. We have some black flake, looks like medium black flake, and then some small um, blue flake. And then the bottom side here, we have sort of a silvery white pearl. And you can see there, hopefully you can tell, there's some little blue flake in that as well. Possibly even some little silver. So that's kind of what we have to do there. And there again, you know, I, I wish I had a sample, but we're going to basically show you how I would make it um, if I had never seen it. I have seen it in person. It was in the first Guggen Bates remelt video. Um, but you know, that's been a couple of months and um, I didn't keep any samples around So I'm looking at another picture of it here and on that bottom side. It looks like there's some oops There's some teeny tiny black flake in that underside So that's kind of why I got out some of my small black flake So I think we're gonna get something that's gonna look good and close there again without a sample in hand It's really hard, but like I've always said guys there are no wrong colors in bait making only new colors. Okay, so watermelon on one side. We'll start with that. See how that does. Again, this is two cups of plastic each. The uh, black bucket dead on swim bait blend. All right, and that's the Lure Works watermelon 101, I think it is. Yes, 101. It already looks to be the right sort of shade of green can tell I'm gonna need a little bit more pigment in there. So we'll go with that for right now. And then I've been looking at the picture. <laughs> so I need, yeah, some of the medium black and the little blue on that side. All right. So here's our medium black. This is actually a little bit larger size. What, what I know is medium black is 0 0.035, this is 0 0.04. So, very, very slight difference there. 
So this is a quarter of a teaspoon, so I'm gonna add two of them. Since it's two cups, that'll be about right. The black flake just always gives such excellent texture to natural colors. Yeah, that's looking, that's looking about right. You don't want it, like I certainly wouldn't want twice that much, but I could probably actually use a little bit more. Every little bit, you know, and, and the longer you use it, the more flakes gonna settle to the bottom of the cup. And even if you stir, you'll never quite stir all of it back into the mix uh, as you did right when you first stirred. So now we're gonna add some of the little blue. This is Lurecraft 0 0.008 blue. And a little goes a long way. So we'll start with just one scoop for now. And what I love about blue flake when you mix it into a pumpkin or a green is that a lot of times the flake comes out looking green. Ooh, yeah, it's looking good. Let me just check my picture reference real fast again. See if I can pull it up for y'all. Eh. Yeah. Lots of little blue in there. And then that medium black flake, that's about right. Now we're gonna move on to the other side. So for the other side, we're gonna start with the white pearl because it's more white pearl than it is anything else, but it looks to be slightly off-white. And some of that might just be the um, blue flake in it. So I might not actually need to use the silver because once I add some of that blue flake and even some of that small black flake, it will kind of darken this white up. So. It could just be that you only need white pearl for this, so that's where we're gonna start. We're just gonna start with white pearl base and then add the flakes, and that will change the color somewhat. Um, so we may not actually need the silver, but should I need to darken it up, I have the silver there for that, for that reason. So yeah, that's looking, that's looking about right. One thing I do remember from holding this color in person is that um, each side, especially that pearl side, was very, very concentrated. The, the pearl side was very opaque. You could not, there was no see-through property about it really. So, good thing about pearls is that you can thicken things up really well with them. All right, and now to add our flakes. So we're gonna add some of the small blue, but not as much as we did on that side. So that side we had a full scoop. This one we're gonna start with about a half. So you can see there, that's about a half. Because it, it, will, it will be more visible against this white, I feel like. And if you add too much of it, it will just actually turn the whole mix blue. It will act as if it's a pigment almost. So, yeah, that's not looking bad. And then we're gonna add a little bit of the small black flake because it did look like there was some in there. So hopefully that right there doesn't ruin it. I think it will look good actually, even if the real one doesn't have that in there. But, you know, I looked at several pictures and it definitely looked like it was there. So that's what we're, uh, let me get a close up of just this color here. You know, and, and to me, this is a good starting point. I'll probably actually add a little bit more blue flake to it because I think it does have more blue flake and uh, we'll meet you back whenever I think I have it right. Okay, everybody, I think I've got it. Basically, all I did was I just thickened each side. I added more white pearl just kind of to taste on the left side and a little bit more watermelon on that side. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one test run of just the Angling AI Ecto Craw because I don't want to run too many molds and then find out that the color still needs a little bit of tweaking. So without further ado, here comes an Ecto Craw. All right, real quick, got our dual injector here. This is just a, uh, this is just one three cavity ecto crawl mold. And uh, I think this color will look really good in a crawl. So definitely think uh, it'll be a good tester. Okay, ecto crawl time, Guggenbait's natural. Did we get it right? Please join me in a drum roll. Let's see what we got. Ooh. Okay. Let's take him out. Stuck on the bottom, stuck on the bottom. 
Look at that. Actually did the top side and the pearl. Oops. I'm still getting used to this mold. I tell you guys, that is really, really, really close. Let me, uh, okay, I am zoomed out all the way. Yeah, let me pop those off. It'll be easier to look at them if we can just kind of fan them out. Come on, baby. Oh, you know, that really might be it, you guys. I'm going to stare at my picture real quick. Ooh. The... Wow. The green pumpkins, or the watermelon side, might be a little greener on the Guggen. Now, it could just be the picture. But I really like this. I really, really like it. And one of the things that I've noticed on the actual Guggen bait itself is that there's a lot of spillover um, in, in the laminate. You have, see a little bit of watermelon bleed over, and that is really common when you're laminating a pearl-based side with a regular pigment-based side. So you're going to get that bleed over, and every picture of a Guggen bait in this color that I've seen has that bleed over. And, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought there, but that bleed over is actually true to the color. So, I think we got it, y'all. I really don't see any reason to change this. You might could add more blue flake to the uh, pearl side, which we might do, but other than that, we got it, y'all. Okay, here we go. We're gonna run one more ecto crawl, a couple of AI punch bugs, and then on the next round, we're gonna run some stingers, or grass grenades, as I call, then we're gonna get out some worms, and I think we will have an excellent display of natural. So here we go. Little spillage there. That's why you always use both gloves. Because <laughs> you never know when that block isn't gonna line up just right. And then you're gonna uh, have, have a mess if you're not wearing both gloves. And it's still hot through two gloves, you know. But that's part of it. Always try and be careful, folks. All right, and next. You know, this color would look good in the Angling AI C block, too. Sort of as a uh, camo, camo swirl, as we call it. All right, let's take a look at this uh, second round of Ecto Crawls. Mm. Yeah, there we go. We got the green side on the top side this time, which uh, which I wanted to do. So it ultimately doesn't matter. But that's the top of the bait there. And then there's the bottom. That is it, you guys. That is natural. So in the bath we go. In the bath, for a lot of you who um, ask about it, it's just cold water. And what it does is... It just kind of gives the baits a little bit of a thermal shock and it just kind of sets them up quicker. It doesn't really assist in the true curing process, but it'll set them up quicker. Um, you know, so if they're still a little warm and, and gooey, um, you know, gooey is just what I use for when the center of the bait is still so soft that you can tell the center hasn't started setting up. They're not actually gooey. If, if you don't mix your plastic, you'll get gooey baits, but just a figure of expression. So it just kind of helps set things up a little faster <clears throat> so that you can then hang them or lay them out to cure um, as you would normally do. So here is the punch bug, and I'm really looking forward to this. This should be juicy. Oh, and there's what I'm talking about, that bleed over. A little bit of bleed, a little bit of bleed. That's true to the natural color from what I can tell. And me personally, I like laminates that are not perfect. There are no straight lines in nature. Although that's pretty straight right there, which is a good laminate. That means I'm doing it right. But uh, whenever there's bleed over like that, I usually kind of prefer that, which is, which is why I love the, the uh, C block so much, because you get all baits that have that kind of bleed over effect. But natural is a laminate. And, uh, you know, I wanted to show you guys how to, how to do it per the Guggen way. So, 
one more on these and then we'll uh we'll run some stingers oh yeah lots of bleed over on that one i'm loving it loving it loving it yeah so there's the side there natural baby loving it all right in the bath and uh for any of you um who who do the kind of water setup thing um put your baits in water don't leave them in there too long because eventually they will get cloudy so 10 minutes 15 minutes is about all you need and now for some stingers so we're gonna get our uh, dual injector back out and hopefully we don't spill it everywhere this time Much better. That's what we want. Nice clean, clean uh, transition there. All right, next. And next. Now I'm shooting these at low temperatures, or I'm, I'm, I'm injecting them at low temperatures. About 330 degrees, which, you know, you gotta think by the time it, by the time you get it in the injector, through the bend blending block and into the mold, it's significantly cooler than that, which uh, low even temps always assists in a nice even laminate. All right, let's look at the grass grenade. Oh yeah. Get a little close up. Oh yeah. All right, now let's flip her over. Could probably um, so if I was if I was gonna run this bait right here because it's a little bit thinner body If I was just gonna do these in the natural I would Probably mix the watermelon a little bit more thick um, Simply because it doesn't quite have the contrast of some of the other molds there You can see the overall hue is a little bit lighter and a lot of that's just this is a skinnier bait so that white belly is gonna affect and brighten the watermelon side on a skinnier bait more so still looks great but just something to keep in mind a lot of times your color is going to look a little bit different depending on what mold the shape and size um, and so you can kind of alter your colors depending on what mold you ultimately are going to use okay so now we have some regular finesse worms these are 6.25 inch um, bass tackle molds and uh, and they're five cavities each so I know that Guggen makes one of their finesse worms. I forget what I should remember what it's called. Uh, trench worm maybe, I think, um, which is a really neat looking worm. So this is a similar style worm. And because it's a thinner body, kind of like we just mentioned uh, with the grass grenade, you would want to thicken up the watermelon. So I did. I added about 20 drops of watermelon. So there's like a bunch of sirens in the background. So um, hope everyone's okay. But uh, anyway, we thickened up the watermelon side, and so these worms should come out looking the way that we want. So let's do it. Okay, and let's look at some of these worms here. Beautiful. Yeah. So I definitely think thickening up the watermelon side was a good call. So, take a closer look. Let's look at the flip side. Y'all, that's it. That is so it. I'm loving it. It's a beautiful color. And it's so simple, just pearl and watermelon with some flake. You know, they just, they really hit the nail on the head with this one. And, um... Yeah, I think we were able to match it really well. So let's look at the other ones. And then we have enough to run a few more molds in it. So we're gonna do something. It won't be another worm. It'll be something else. So trying to think, <clears throat> what could we do? Alrighty. But first, let's look at those. Looking good. Beautiful color. Well done, Guggen Baits. Okay, some of you probably know what mold is coming if you've seen my channel or you're familiar with AI molds. But act surprised anyway, here we go. It's 
top side is the left side on this mold. So I want my watermelon side on the left of the uh, blending block. Okay, next. And last one today. Oh, a little out of frame, but whatever. We'll get it in frame when it really matters, when it's time to dig it out. All right, let's see what these final three molds are. Some of you probably guessed right. It is a jerk bait. There we go. All right, looking good. Let's take them out here. Come on. There we go. Guggen baits natural in a jerk bait. There it is. Thought that would look pretty neat, and it does. You know, I'm gonna say something that's very, uh, it's gonna sound very corny here, but this natural color is really natural. Like it, it, it just looks natural in every bait. Every bait looks good. You could make this in a swim bait, a frog, a little crappy bait, you know, panfish lures. Just I'm, I'm struggling to think of a mold in some sort of style of bait that this wouldn't look good in. And look at that. It's wonderful. Okay. <laughs> this color kind of even goes with the Guggen bag. I just figured what the heck. Trying to get fancy here with my display. So here's everything. And you guys remember this was four cups of plastic. So if you are... Um, sort of wondering how much you can get with four cups of plastic. I mean, you can get a lot here. So, I mean, this is what? This is six ecto craws, I think 12 grass grenades, 16 punch bugs, 15 finesse worms, and 12 jerk baits. Um, so quite a bit of stuff. And that's just with four cups of plastic. And uh, let's see, yeah, here, <laughs> always, always get a kick out of this here's all the sprues so that's all the leftover sprues these long ones you could probably even use as a worm so yeah that'll be an interesting video whenever i go fishing with a sprue but uh yeah super awesome color and uh i, I was thrilled and um happy to get it right the first time so if we just kind of take a closer look here happen to be right on those bugs there but we'll kind of pan around those ecto crawls are just something else. Such an awesome mold. There are some of the jerk baits. Some of the finesse worms over there. Some more jerk baits up top. Yeah. Really, really pretty color. It's it's so basically, if you were to put red flake in the watermelon side, you would sort of have a watermelon red pearl almost. You know, true watermelon red pearl doesn't have a white pearl bottom. It's more of a uh, violet highlight pearlish bottom, but put some red flake in that and I think you guys will like what you get. But uh, yeah, there it is y'all. Guggen Bates Natural, very pretty color and uh, I'm very, very, very happy with it. Yeah, what do you guys think? The sprue worm. Here's the crazy part. Why wouldn't this work? If a stick worm, a Yamamoto Cinco, which is just a basic shape that just sinks to the bottom. Works. Why wouldn't this work? Yeah, definitely doing a video on that. You heard it here first, folks. The sprue worm challenge. We're gonna do it. So off to the side on the table here, I had some swim baits that are that have been curing. So it's it's um, hyper shift on the top, a green chartreuse uh, line, and then just blue highlight bottom. That right there is the Stank X Baits Rocket Mold, which is a silicone mold. Then here's the same thing in the 6-inch AI pour. And then the same thing in the 4, there we go, in the 4-inch AI pour. So, yep, little, little swim bait stuff there. I usually have some laying on the table, so I figured, hey, why not show you guys some stuff I've uh, been working on as well. All right. It's hot, you guys. Ugh. 
This Florida heat has been bad the last couple days. We've had a few days where the heat index was, I think, like 106, which uh, I saw in other areas of the country was also that bad. So I guess it wasn't just Florida, but um, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. Um, shoot me a comment down below if you like the natural color. I love it. If you've never seen it, who knows? Maybe you'll try it now. Um, I think it's a super duper cool, cool color. And I'm curious to know, of course, as always, which bait was your favorite? Was it the Ecto Crawl? Was it the uh, Grass Grenade? The Punch Bug? The Worms? Or the Jerk Baits? So, lots of, lots of cool stuff down there. There it is. Lots of cool stuff down there to look at today. And um, yeah, please uh, also shoot me some comments and let me know how you think I did. If I matched it really well, well, good, sorta of good. Chris, they kinda sucked, you know? I've Maybe some of you have seen natural in color a lot more, uh, excuse me, in person a lot more than I have and can lend some perspective. I need to uh, run up to Bass Pro soon and see if they have it. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, we'll catch you next time on the World's Worst Fishing.